town on a boat from the southern islands sailing the reach before a following sea she was making for the trades on the outside and the downhill run to Papa Ete off the wind on this heading line the Marquesas Got 80 feet of a water line Nicely making way In a noisy bar in Avalon I tried to call you But on a midnight watch I realized Why twice you ran away Think about Think about how many times One thing about wildlife photography is it's ever-changing. You never know what you're going to see from every morning. And, and sandpipers, and there, there's so many varieties of birds that, that it's, it's just it's so much fun to do. You're, you'll, you'll, you'll be out there for days on end. You know, I'll, I'll go out five, six mornings in a row, but it's so different every morning. I, I'll even think to myself, I need to, I need to change it up a little bit, and I need to to basically go look for something different to photograph. But every morning that I'm down there, you know, be it pelicans or seagulls or sandpipers digging for um, sand crabs, it's always so different. The tides are different. The, the lighting's different. Um, and this particular morning was, you know, nothing different than any other morning. I was just down there shooting what was, you know, what was walking around and, and, and this particular um, group was five or six sandpipers, but they they seemed to stay together. And and I basically just followed them and and shot images and shot them from different sides. And um, I was actually quite pleased and quite surprised when I went back. And and as every morning when I shoot in the morning, I race back to my studio to to download my images, excited about what I'm going to see and and kind of look at them in thumbnails just to get a sense of composition and something that's really pleasing to the eye and that one's popped out immediately as as wow you know that's and when you when you look at the image you see that the legs are all raised almost in in harmony and it 
it was it was really a movie shot. It's it again. I I know that I I I claim that a lot of shots are my favorites, but that definitely is one of my standout shots. That um, you know, there's there's a lot of luck involved in photography, and and that to get four birds walking with such a great composition. Um, I chose a very shallow depth of field, which I think made the shot also. And to to it's it's all happening in a split second. It's not like I I get to set the sh type of shot up. So to to have something so beautiful set up in just a split second and to be lucky enough to be there to photograph it. Beautiful, beautiful shot of a pelican gliding along the wave and the the pan ended up being perfect. The shutter was right and it's um another one of those shots that people just can't believe what they see that they're 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 intrigued by it, they're attracted to it, but they're sure that somehow it's um trickery of either Photoshop or um or some other means that isn't natural but um, that that was an absolute 100 percent natural panning shot that is beautiful i ran out and i remember coming across this particular pod and it wasn't all that impressive because it wasn't that big and usually smaller pods are very difficult to shoot there's just there just isn't enough activity going on so I actually was running past this pod looking for a bigger pod. There's probably only 20 or 30 um, dolphins in this in this particular pod. So I ran right past them and just took a look at them, you know, as I would do just to make sure that there wasn't, you know, more of the more of the pod below the surface and so I I kind of cruised by and when I when I went by them I saw a baby dolphin that didn't look like it was any more than 8 or 10 inches long and it popped out it really couldn't thrust itself out of the water, but I, I saw it break the water, and I saw it, and I, I slammed on the brakes. I was like, did I really just see what I thought I just saw? And so I went alongside and just kind of um, motored with them very slowly, and I saw it again, and I realized what it was. I was like, wow, I need an image. I, I need it. I've never seen a dolphin that small. That was incredible. I had to have just been born. So I stayed with them and I started to notice in this pod that it's that's all it was was mothers and babies it was like a nursery pod and so I I was just in awe of it I knew that I was going to be with this pod all day long and the particular sequence that I shot of them of the mother and daughter was the result of just finishing shooting another mother and baby going into the water and as I was about to lift my lens I saw what appeared to be something coming out so I stayed with it and it turned out to be this mother and daughter excelling out of the water they they just kind of exploded out of the water and it ended up being a six shot sequence and when it passed I knew I had something really special um, to this day I think it's probably the best image I've ever shot I heard a noise off the stern of my boat and I looked back and it was a pod of four orca whales were moving at about 20 30 knots um, in formation they came right off the stern of my boat all I saw was their dorsal fins moving together and it made a noise that I'll never forget it was a, it was incredible it was because it was such flat water you could just hear their their dorsal fins cutting through the water and w at that speed it was just it was in, it was incredible and when I saw it I I basically did what a photographer never wants to do I dropped my lens just to admire it and then realizing that in that split second that I I need to get my lens back up I need to get the shot but it was gone and I was like that is the most incredible thing I've ever seen but there was no way that they were going to get through this harbor without getting pounded and turned out they got pushed a little bit south of where a boat likes to come into the harbor um, which set them up to be um, they were very vulnerable they were broadside to the waves and I saw a massive swell building up on them and I felt for sure this boat was going to end up on the rocks or end up on the beach so I basically just documented as it came through shot a sequence of them coming through and what pretty much saved that boat's life um, was the fact that they were powered very well and they raced the swell to the jetty and the the resulting shot is the wave basically they just got tucked in behind the jetty and the wave pounded the jetty threw white water all over them but they survived because they didn't take the, the brunt of the swell into the side of the boat. 
It was a spectacular sequence. It was a spectacular shot. It was, it was, it was awesome just to watch. I shoot the pier a lot. Um, reason being is that it's, it has so many, is that okay? Mm-hmm. It has so many different looks at so many different times of days from so many different angles that, that you really, even, even now I've probably shot it 50 times and I don't, I, I feel like there's just so many different looks to it and so many different moods that I'll probably shoot it another 50 times because everyone's unique. Um, this particular shot, the tide was at one of the lowest tides of the year, which um, exposed all the muscles and barnacles and the and just the rugged life of the pier. Um, it happened to be this shot. It actually happened to be dark. It was probably an hour after sunset. And I was just about to leave. I'd been shooting all through the sunset, and I decided to um, do um, a little bit more of a long-term exposure. So I set my tripod up. The probably the most difficult part of this shot is when I metered, I metered for what was going to be about a 45 minute exposure, but I knew the tide was going to push up on me probably prior to that, but I went ahead and just took the chance. Um, I've done this a few different times too, where I'll be 20 minutes into a 30 minute exposure and the tide basically comes up and gets me. Um, so I've got to grab my camera and run for the, for the dry land. So this particular time, the tide held off, um, the long-term exposure, blurred the water beautifully and it, it it i decided to print it in sepia because i just love the rustic look of the pier and the you know it, it to me it fit the mood of what i was trying to achieve and um turned out great